I didn't check the spelling, but it's something like this. There may be two L's. You can check me later. Um, an, an ellipse is a circle in perspective, okay? So super easy. Uh, circles in perspective. And the convention of perspective applies to ellipses like this. So basically, you have your eye level is here, okay? Now, I like to talk about your eye level as like if laser beams were shooting out of your eyes, they'd hit the wall, you know, at the horizon line and also at your eye level. And it's all about how tall you are, what your relationship is to the world. So how I see an ellipse is different than someone who's a lot taller than me is going to see it and different than someone who's shorter than me is going to see it. And I'll show you why. So uh, basically, if I have a circle, and this isn't a perfect circle, obviously, but you get my idea. If I have a circle and I stretch my hands out in front of me and I see that circle at my eye level, it's going to be a flat line. Okay. But as it goes below my eye level, it starts to open up into sort of like an oval shape. And the further and further and further and further it goes below my eye level, the more of the circle I see and the less perspective is influencing my view of it. So eventually, if I'm right fully on top of it, it's just a circle. But as it gets, again, closer and closer to my eye level, it starts to flatten out and get smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. Now, the same thing happens when you go above your eye level. So, for example, if you're in a room with can lights and you're directly under the can light, which is a perfect circle, you're going to see it directly under the light as a full circle of 360 degrees. But if you step away in the room and the relationship to your eye level changes, it's going to flatten out and start to sort of become more of an oval and so on and so forth. So that's how, this is how it looks. Flat line when it's right at your eye level. But then as it gets further away from your eye level and higher up, it opens up more and more and more and more and more and so on and so forth. Same thing here. You see a little bit more of it. You see it's kind of like phases of the moon. There's something to this. It's all connected. Okay, so on and on and on and on it goes. Now, another thing about all this is that when you're dropping a box on a symmetrical cylindrical object, the ellipse is affected by the perspective of the box. So let's say I'm talking about my box for um, one of the objects in the still life, and I'll show you this on the drawing later. We have symmetry in the box, and the ellipse swings around the axis of the near and the far, like this. It helps if you make the sound effect when you're drawing. Okay? Now, the circle itself is the same size, the same dimension, because it's, you know, 360 degrees, but it's in perspective, so it kind of shifts, right? So we see more of the front of it than we do the back. And again, that is all in relationship to our eye level and the proximity to the object. So back here, the second half of the ellipse, the back half of the ellipse is going to look smaller. And the front half is going to look wider. So when you section into those quarters, or even if you go really way far and um, continue to dissect this, the, then the eighths, the ones in the back are going to look smaller than the ones in the front. And so paying attention to that convention with perspective, circles and perspective, is going to help you have more accuracy in your picture if you understand that idea. This is really becomes obvious in um, translucent, transparent objects like a glass bottle because you can see the other side. You know, if I have, if this is a bottle, let's let me get rid of that front for a minute. If I've got this box, my orientation to it is that I'm looking at it straight on like this, and I have this bottle. Don't judge me on my 30 second drawings on the board. And I have this ellipse here. The back of it, you're going to be able to see. And you're going to see that if you sort of draw a line across the middle of it, you have this back that, that you can look at. Now, when it's, a, when it's an opaque object, you're not going to be able to see the back. But you can imagine it. You can kind of draw through, and you can kind of know based on where the 
the front of the object starts to do this curvature and the wall of the object meets it, you can sort of make an educated guess about where this back end is going to swing around. And then that's going to help you with the curve of the object. Obviously, that's, that's not great line quality. We have to reduce that a little bit. OK? So ellipses, circles in perspective, they're not that difficult. They're not that scary. You just have to apply uh, the conventions around them and practice. That's the most important thing. So I'll show you what we're drawing now. <laughs> 